Hello and welcome or welcome back. My name is Jen and today we're doing something a little bit different. Not an expert in firearms at all, but definitely wanted to share kind of uh, what my journey experience has been <laughs> up until this point, including this weekend of a class that I had just taken. So this video is not meant to be any sort of political statement. I know people have all kinds of views all over the map and spectrum when it comes to gun control um, and things like that. I respect whatever your decision is if you're not comfortable with guns, you know, that's okay. This video um, is more so for those that are thinking about getting a gun or thinking about getting a concealed carry permit and just kind of like, what does that entail? What does that look like? What are some of the things I want to be, you know, thinking about and whatnot? Um, so sometime last year, my husband really wanted me to get a gun, which I wasn't opposed to. It just, you know, wasn't something I've never owned a gun. Um, but I'm like, okay, yeah, okay, <laughs> let's get one. Um, so he helped me pick one out and we ended up getting, so this is a Smith & Wesson M&P 380 Shield Easy M2. <laughs> so there... <laughs> There's the type of gun that um, he had helped me pick out. Uh, and I will show you uh, just some of the features on it that um, we thought would really make it a good gun for me. So here is the gun here. I'll take this out, you know, there are no bullets in there, none in the chamber there. So this is, this is unloaded. And I've double checked for you for, for that. Um, so something we really liked about this. So it does have here, there's, you know, the safety. Right now the safety's off. Safety's on. It's on there on both sides. So as you're holding it, um, you know, just really easy on and off there with your thumb. Another feature this has here is this, um, it's kind of this button on the back. That is an additional safety. So unless it's meant, you know, when, you, when you're holding the gun like this, it, that's pressed in. Um, so the trigger will not work unless the safety is down and this is pressed in in the back. So you're not going to have any like accidental uh, discharge or shooting from the trigger if you are not, you know, firmly holding the back in place there. So I do really like that feature on, on this. So this was the gun that he had gotten me, or we purchased together, it's in my name. Um, brought it home, I put it back in its box, and I kept it locked in my desk <laughs> as a paperweight. Um, so I now do own a gun, but it just, it stayed in my desk there. Um, there was a weekend that my husband was like going away for the weekend, he's like, you know, in case anything happens, you should keep the gun, you know, by, by the bedside. So I proceeded to take this box out of my desk and put this box on the nightstand next to the bed. Um, you know, it wasn't loaded. I did have ammo like in the box with it, but it wasn't like in the gun. Um, it would have served me no purpose whatsoever if I actually needed it. Um, and again, so he had taken me to the gun range to show me, uh, you know, how to load it, how to fire it, and things like that. So I was comfortable doing that, but I definitely had to think through the steps. I'm like, okay, I need to do this, then I need to do this, and I need to make sure this safety's off. So there was definitely still that thought process. Process. It wasn't like an automatic thing for me. And then uh, both of us did apply for and receive our concealed carry permit. Um, so now I have a gun, legally owned and registered, I have my concealed carry permit, and I still have this in a box as a paperweight in my desk. I would highly, highly, highly recommend, um, and if you don't live in the same area that I do, so I'm in Northwestern Pennsylvania, if you are in this area, I recommend this class that I'm about to tell you about. Um, if you're not in this area, there are courses, I'm sure, just like it uh, all over the country. Check with your local gun shops, I'm sure they'll be able to point you in the right direction. Um, so, for Christmas this year, my husband actually got, um, 
So he actually got this for me as his wife and he got one for his mom who also has a gun and also his sister. So the three women in his life, he got this gift certificate for us um, for the Sheepdog Project and they, they offer classes. This is this, and this certificate entitles the holder to level one CCW defensive handgun safety course. Um, so what an amazing <laughs> present. Uh, so this past weekend, we took this eight hour course. Um, and I will tell you, uh, men and women both, if you are considering carrying uh, a, a weapon or a, you know, a handgun, take a class like this oh my goodness so a little about, bit about the sheepdog project they offer these classes and the reason they call it that they explain um so 99 percent of the population are sheep one percent of the population are wolves and then that last one percent are the sheepdogs <clears throat> and we are the ones we want to protect ourselves we want to protect the sheep against that one percent that's the wolves Again, if you were in Northwest Pennsylvania, the location of this class was held at uh, Ultra Firearms. It is such a cool place. Um, so there's actually a walkthrough video on YouTube. So I'm actually going to uh, show that clip real quick just to show you guys. Like when you show up to this place, you're not even sure you're at the right place because you pull into this like parking lot and all you see are shipping containers. Um, like there's no, there's no store. You're like, where, what? <laughs> The store is actually underground in this underground bunker and you have to walk through like the shipping container to get um, into the store. So our, our the first part of our class was actually in the upstairs portion, like we were inside of a shipping container that was turned into a classroom. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. We're going to show that clip and you can kind of see this place. Now, uh, this place is like politically on one side. So... Uh, Forgive any signs you see if you don't agree with them. <laughs> All right, let's take a quick look at Ultra Firearms and what makes it the best firearms retailer to buy your guns and ammunition. As you walk in, to the left, there is a work in progress, 360 degree pistol shooting range. And going straight past the gun shop, there is another work in progress, 200 yard rifle shooting range. If you look up, you'll see a tower. Also a work in progress, soon to be a guard tower, capped with a Confederate flag showing Ultra Firearms radical beliefs. The the top level of the shipping containers will be painted the same color as the bottom. Going into the first shipping container, you will see that we will be posting a wall of honor and a wall of shame for proponents of gun control and gun rights, as well as various patriots of America. Walking into the second shipping container that goes into the main gun shop. You'll see that the gun shop is well outfitted, underground, thick steel doors. No one's easily getting in here. If you take a look around, you'll notice that Ultra Firearms carries plenty of weapons, accessories, they'll carry just about everything you need. 
Okay, so this this was an eight hour course. Um, the first four hours was kind of classroom training. It was not it was not boring at all. Like I was just soaking in this information and it was really like interesting um, and things like I would need to know. It wasn't like, so I was really worried that this would be uh, like super intimidating. Um, you know, this is serious stuff, learning how to use a handgun and I was just afraid like, okay this is gonna be like super strict and high like high tension and I'm gonna be nervous and not know what to do and um, it was the complete opposite our instructor his name was Ron so nice so patient um, very knowledgeable would answer any questions would explain things again if we needed to uh, it was really really great so I just wanted to share a couple things that I learned from that portion that I just thought were really interesting um, and just kind of things to have in the back of your head if you're kind of thinking about going through this process. So I learned, um, so three fourths of bullets fired miss the intended target. That's interesting and good to know. Um, and something you want to have in the back of your mind. Um, if you would ever have to use your weapon um, whether it be someone invades your house or whether it be you are in a gas station that's being robbed and you decide that you are ready and able to jump in there I don't know that I realize this but when you shoot that gun even if it hits your intended target that bullet can pass through them pass through a wall and still have enough energy left to hit and kill someone on the other side of that. So if you're in your home, if it's like a home invasion, um, and, you know, and you shoot the bad guy, what is behind him? What is behind that wall? Do you have children sleeping behind that wall? Um, kind of things, I mean, you need to be thinking real quick about that. Uh, same thing. If there's a, a hold up at, at a gas station and someone is trying to rob the cashier at gunpoint and you are legally armed and able to act, um, you know, you don't necessarily want to take that shot if the cashier is right behind them because that bullet can pass through them and into an innocent bystander and kill them, which you are then fully responsible for. So, I mean, it's, it's a big, big responsibility. Um, something else to think through, like think of our justice system <laughs> and kind of how, I don't want to say screwed up it can be, but I mean, there's, there's a process to it. Um, so justified shootings happen all the time, every day, but lawsuits, Civil lawsuits are going to happen anyway. Like, even if you aren't criminally charged, like, if you're criminally cleared, you didn't do anything wrong, the family of the person you shot, they're going to sue you for everything you've got. And you can win the case, but it's going to cost you millions of dollars, like, as an individual to win that case. Oh, so it's it's so crazy. Like, and it's sad that that's the way it is, but that's, that's just the way the system is. I'm going to segue a second here to... Um, a representative came like during class to talk to us and they were from US Law Law Shield Legal Defense for Self Defense. So they kinda came and gave their spiel and I knew immediately like I'm a hundred percent on board with this. Um so what this company does <clears throat> and it's available in every state across across the country basically it's like insurance so for 10 bucks a month you will have unlimited civil and criminal defense litigation coverage um and knowing that both my husband and i have concealed carry permits um, and we do plan to carry our weapon with us like this was a no-brainer because if there is ever any incident in which we have to fire our weapon there's going to be so much, like number one, you know, God forbid if that takes someone's life, that is now an automatic criminal investigation and we will be on our way to the police station in the back of a cop car. Even if we were the victim, even if we didn't do anything wrong, that is how that story is going to start. 
Um, and there will likely be a lawsuit from the family that's going to sue us. So that would bankrupt us in a heartbeat. So this was absolutely something that uh, we wanted to have. Um, so it was just interesting thinking through this process as well. I love watching like the crime shows. So there's the show, um, The First 48 Hours, which has to do with homicide and trying to find the, you know, the killer within the first 48 hours. And they always portray that those that aren't speaking to the police or, you know, refusing to kind of freely give up information, you know, they have something to hide. I hate that. It kind of makes me mad. Um, and I am absolutely pro, pro law enforcement. I have family as law enforcement and absolutely have the highest, highest respect for them and what they do um, and for them putting their lives on the line every day. So, I mean, if there would be an incident where I was the victim and had to shoot my, my weapon, I mean, I would be the one spilling my guts to the police saying, this is what happened and this and this and this and, um, you know, wanting to work with them and wanting to, um, but you can't do that. <laughs> um, so they actually, so I have a temporary card here. Uh, I will be getting my regular member ID card in the mail shortly. But on the back here, so it kind of walks you through what to do after a self-defense incident. So number one, make sure the threat has been controlled and that you are safe. Two, don't disturb the scene. Um, three, call 911. Now, when you call them, you only tell them your name and location of the emergency and that you have been the victim of a crime. You make it clear that you were the victim. You tell them I need police and EMS and that's it. You don't make any statements about what happened. That's their job to figure out once they get here. Um, and you know, they always tell you like, stay on the line till police get there. Do not stay on the line. You are not obligated to stay on the line even if they tell you so. You've already told them where you are, what emergency services you need. You get off the phone with them and then you call the phone number on your card because you want to speak Ideally, you want to have your attorney involved and on their way before you're at the police station. Um, so you hang up 911, you call this number, this emergency hotline number that is going to put you in touch with these attorneys. Um, and you make sure you speak to them before you make any statements to law enforcement. Um, comply with all police commands. Uh, so when police get there, they don't know who the bad guy is. They don't know who the good guy is. So, I mean, don't be rude about it. Comply with them. Uh, make sure you're not operating in a threatening manner. Make sure your hands are clearly visible and that your weapon is holstered. It's secured. Um, but then you want to make sure that you invoke your legal rights. It says, I do not consent to any searches. I'm invoking my right to remain silent and my right to an attorney. I mean, the police will tell you. You know, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you. So you would think, okay, the less I say, the better. Even though you didn't do anything wrong, um, don't, don't get chatty. So again, I am super pro law enforcement, but in a situation like this, like you've got to protect yourself. You know, you will answer all of their questions but after you have met with your attorney and they kind of, like, they've been through this. They know this is how we need to answer the questions. Um, and not that you're going to lie about it, but <sighs> things can get twisted. So an example of this um, that they had shared with us, and this this was a pretty, pretty big story last year. So this was January of 2020. So just this past year, there was that, that shooting, that church shooting um, in Texas. So this the surveillance video is available online and I'm going to I'm going to show you Well first I'm just going to show you the clip in real time. Um this is this is a shooting that two people died. So this is graphic and not not super graphic, but I mean you're going to see exactly what happened. So we're going to go ahead and watch this. And what you're going to see so this was uh in a church a guy had a shotgun 
I guess, hidden under his clothes or whatnot. And you'll see he shoots two people and then another, an armed person within the church there shot, uh, shot the guy. All, all in five seconds. So we'll watch this. Okay, I'm gonna play it one more time and I'm gonna slow it down um, because this is what was really impressed upon me. Like before I took this class this past weekend, like I said, so this, I kept this box next to my bed <laughs> in case I would need it. Well, here's the thing. You only have seconds to act, seconds. And before I took this class, like even if you put that gun in my hand, I would still have to think through, okay, I need to take the safety off, then I need to do this, then I need, like, too late, you're already dead. Like, it just needs to be an automatic reaction. So we're gonna watch this and slow it down. I'm gonna kind of walk you through, like, just how quick this happens. Okay, so up at the top there, you can see the guy on the right pulls the shotgun on uh, the guy giving communion. The guy behind there stands up to draw his gun and before he's even able to get it up, the gunman shoots him. And then the guy in the back pulls his weapon and shoots the gunman. All in less than five seconds. Okay, so now tying that back. Um, so the man that, that shot the perpetrator... I believe he was the head of the security team there and like trained the people there with, on the firearms. So, um, so he absolutely knew what he was doing, didn't hesitate, um, had all the confidence in the world in doing what he did. And you can clearly see in the video, like he saved a lot of lives. I mean, it should have been a no brainer. That investigation, it took the grand jury nine months, nine months to decide that they weren't gonna criminally charge him. What? Like, this is where I don't understand our system. So here's this hero that was deemed a hero. Who would have had nine months of legal fees and attorney fees. Like, it probably would have bankrupted him. But he was a member of U.S. Law Shield. Um, so his only cost was 10 bucks a month for those nine months that things were tied up in court. Um, so I mean, it's just, it's crazy and it kind of baffles my mind, but just, just so you know, like that's, that's the kind of the system we have. Um, so I mean, definitely consider, consider that. We talked about like different holsters and things, um, and you know, a lot of women that want to get a concealed carry permit, um, you know, they actually make like purses that have like a holster in it. Um, and our instructor kind of shared, he's like, mm, they might not be the best. I, and I completely understand and get it. Like, so imagine you have this purse and your gun is in the purse. Um, and the instructor said this to this, so he's like, okay, well show me you getting the, the gun like out of the purse. Okay, well, you look down and he's like, too late. Like, you're already dead. <laughs> like, it, you can't take your eyes off of, you know, what's going on in front of you. And you have seconds, seconds to react. You don't have time to dig through your purse. You know, wherever you have that holster, it's got to be, like, immediately accessible. So on the range, I had my holster um, probably about, like, 4 o'clock, 3 or 4 o'clock right here on, like, my hip or the back of my hip there. So, you know, you could draw it you know, pretty, pretty quickly. Um, and that holster that I was using was one, so it went on my belt, uh, and it was on the outside, you know, of my jeans. They make holsters that would go on the inside um, of your waistband, kind of going along with the concealed carry part. Um, and this is where I'm still tr struggling, trying to figure out what kind of holster to get. I don't got any more room in my jeans. 
<laughs> my husband's just like, well, get better your jeans. I'm like, er, wrong answer. Um, <laughs> and the one that was on the outside of my jeans is very comfortable. And I think in the winter, you know, wearing hoodies or a jacket, I, I feel very comfortable and confident that I could conceal it well and go to the supermarket and whatever. No one's going to know the difference, you know, that I, that I have it. Um, but in the summer and whatnot, I mean, it's going to be visible. So I'm like, eh, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll still have to kind of play around with that. And then we had talked about, um, you know, are there any kind of holsters I would go running like on the bike trail and, you know, the further away from town you get, you know, you can be out there kind of like on your own and not really sure who you're going to come in contact with or whatnot. And I was like, that'd be a good idea to be able to like take it with me. Um, but, you know, it's kind of limited as to what kind of holsters you can have with gym shorts or sweatpants kind of thing because most holsters are going to go like on a belt loop. So they do make one called like a belly band and it's almost like this stretchy thing that kind of goes around your stomach there and a holster can like velcro onto it so you can like put the firearm there. So I considered that um, and the instructor said the only thing about that is you know if you're going to be sweaty and stuff like make sure you are cleaning your gun on a regular basis. <laughs> So that's an option, but just again, like, you know, things to think about. Practice the draw. You know, if somebody's trying to kill you, you gotta get that gun out, you gotta be quick. Just like we saw in that video, like the guy that was only two rows behind, I mean, he was going for his gun and it was just, it wasn't fast enough. So something that I wrote down that I thought was super, super helpful because, I mean, just because you now have a weapon and just because you have a concealed carry permit, you know, don't go and get like this superhero complex of uh, the second anything goes down, like you're drawing that weapon and you're gonna step in like, whew. So I wrote down, they said, sometimes doing the right thing isn't the right thing. And sometimes it's better to be a reporter than a responder. Um, so I mean, you're just gonna really have to be diligent and decide like, am I gonna act on this? And I mean, <laughs> it's gotta be a super quick decision, but you know, these are kind of the things in the back of your mind ahead of time. So that was our, our morning, um, the four hour classroom portion. And then we came back in the afternoon for four hours out on the gun range. And it was a very step-by-step -step progressive, you know, we started with the, with the BB guns, um, which feel and look like just like our regular handguns. Um, but obviously it was a safer <laughs> progression to start with the BB guns, um, it was, you know, very repetitive. So, I mean, it, I mean, people learn different, different ways. Um, but I mean, it, it stuck with me. So when I went in that morning, like I, it would seriously take me several minutes to think things through. Whereas now I'm very comfortable. Um, I'm comfortable with, with how to hold it, with, uh, how to load it, uh, and things like that. Um, so, I mean, I haven't gotten a holster yet, but, uh, that's next on my list of things to do and then try to get comfortable with kind of having it on my person. So before, um, like I said, my husband had taken me to the gun range before and I was awful with aim. It was like the spray and pray <laughs> kind of thing. Um, you know, just kind of shoot and be like, did I get it? Did I get the target? And I'd be so excited just to, even if I, if I hit the huge, like, target. <laughs> um, there was no consistency and accuracy whatsoever. Um, and I was using the sights on the top. But it was just, you know. So when we were on the gun range, you know, I learned the proper way of, like, using the sights. And you learn, like, you know, which is your dominant eye and which is, uh, you know, how to line up those sights. How to breathe um, and how to quickly reline. You know, obviously, there there's kickback. You know, when you shoot that gun, there's kickback to it. So how to quickly, you know, realign uh, your target there and pull the trigger again. So... After only four hours in that second part of the class, my accuracy was a million times better than it had been when I came in that morning. Um, just learning those things that I had no idea about. So, I mean, my confidence level in handling this firearm and being confident in my ability to use it if I would ever need to has skyrocketed just from this one like eight hour course. 
um, and they offer, you know, this was just level one. There are other levels. I cannot recommend this class enough to anyone, like even if you're just considering it. Um, so if you're considering it, I hope this video was helpful. Um, I will try to link all the information down below for Ultra Firearms, for the Sheepdog Project, these classes, and also US Law Shield website. Um, I recommend all of them. And if you're not in this area, uh, you know, contact your local gun shops and say like, hey, are there classes available? Um, and get yourself signed up. So I hope you found this helpful and thank you for joining me. Bye.